All right, everyone. Now we have seen the very first part of the question that's to do with the evaluation of the performance report just now. And therefore now let us have a look at part number two. Now once again, based on this exam question given, now the students or the candidates are required to recommend with the appropriate calculation and justification of the three new performance matches. Now let's once again have a look at the appendix pre presented and provided here. Now the students are merely provided the financial data such as like revenue, and this is one part of it. Now the revenue that we have here, uh, of course, uh, we get to know that uh, these are the total, okay? And at the same time class, uh, we have just got the profit calculated earlier with the use of the revenue and the profit margin, okay? Now, so they just want us to come up with the three different measures and particularly for their store. Now, so far, we do not have any information about their web sales. And therefore, the information that we could use or to produce here, it's mainly on the physical store. Now, therefore, now what are the ratios or even uh, the data that we can produce I mean, we can use here to produce the info, and that's when we are making use of the floor space, the square meter, and that's one of it, because we know that's part of the resources. And number two class, don't forget, we can use the number of the employees. It's supposed to be this one, okay? So the number of the employees is another part we can use that's part of our resources. So therefore, now we say it is important for us to measure, all right, the resource utilization, which currently do not appear in the report. And as means of improving the presentation of the Shivan's result as what you get to see. Okay, now, so a very quick one. Now let's have a look at these three new performance measures required so we have to state this and of course as what I've mentioned we say we come up with a point form and we have to start with the first now so we say it now this is just for us to create another three new measures that do not appear in the current all right, so we talk about the current report now, of course, as shown in the appendix number one. And this is in a way for us to improve the presentation, as we say. So this presentation wise of the Shivan's result, and that's what we have to remember, okay, from the question. So this is in a way what we have to include. Now, of course, uh, class, now we just mentioned that this is very much on looking at how to run the physical stores. So we say it, results on running the physical stores is what we have to produce, okay? Now, such as the use of labor resources, say for example, and that means the... Uh, employees all right so we can use the number of employees now as well as the floor space occupied all right that's for us in a way to identify okay now what is the resource utilization rate and we can try to come up with that okay so it's something pretty straightforward and easy and as a result, now what we can do is I'm trying to come out with the measures in the Excel file and mainly class, let us see, for two different years, we're making a comparison between the two, okay? Now that's important. Now we can always come out with the revenue calculation first, okay? So say for instance, we can come up with the revenue generated by each of the employee all right so that's what we know here 
Now, so we get to note, class, that the information has been provided when it comes to the revenue. All right. So, for example, uh, this total revenue comes to about two six three two with the number of employees. Okay, two six three two with forty thousand five hundred employees. And that's in a way class in thousand wise. If we get it rounded, that's going to be like sixty five for your information. And same goes to the total revenue here once again uh, that I've shown to us like a two six o six. All right, so that's two six o six over thirty nine point four in thousand of the employees. All right, so that's good for us actually to make a comparison later over the years. And of course, don't forget, we will then have to measure on the floor space as well. Now on this floor space, uh, we talk about once again with the revenue, 2632, and which is not the problem, but we need the square meters. All right, so that's like 850. All right, that is like 850 and pretty straightforward. Okay, great. So let us see class that from here. Now we know that's close to about in meter. How much is it? Okay, so that's uh, in a way important class because uh, we know that uh, in total, when it comes to that square meter that it shows to us all right so it shouldn't be a problem okay then of course class uh, we will then be able to see even for these now we, we know that that's like 2606 yeah all right 2606 and of course at the same time with 828 Okay, great. Now, so we have got the answer for the revenue, and of course, we can come up with the operating profit as the last one. For example, the operating per square meter. Once again, no class, but it's not uh, based on the per employee because we find that there's so many things that seem to be uncontrollable, right? In this case. And as a result, class, uh, find that it's somehow important here, class, just to relate the floor space to the operating profit because that's for us to generate any profit arising from the business. And that's important. Okay, once again, class, uh, we have got the profit here already. And this profit uh, seems to be like just now we have already calculated like 434 in terms of the million, all right, four, three, four in terms of the million, and uh, you get to see class that here we have to divide by the 850,000 for your information. So again, I'm going to adjust it to one decimal place in the exam, and we know that that's like eight to eight, if I'm not wrong, for these and the profit of the 430 million. Right, so with the amendment of these, okay, so class got it. Now we get about 519.3, and these are the three different measures we are seeing, okay. Now, so of course, uh, we know class that generally, uh, if let's say they just want us to come up with these, and are you actually required to comment on the result or not? Now, the answer is not really, because we are not here to evaluate the performance. But uh, one thing good, if, if let's say you are trying to calculate like whether uh, it has an increase or the decrease here over the years, that's fine if you are trying to include these. And knowing that class, for example, that the revenue per employee for last year, like 66.1, but it dropped to like a 65,000 per employee this year. And what does it indicate again? The class that simply indicates that uh, in terms of the 
skill or the productivity of the employee could probably drop and more investigation or further investigations would have to be carried out okay before we can conclude but again in the exam questions basically we're not required to comment anything on that so this is still fine now what about the revenue per square meter we're looking at same thing here that it was more like 3147 but again when it comes to year 2017 again it has dropped okay and these are all just the absolute figure and where somehow i think it's important for uh, the business trying to get some relative measures instead of the absolute measure now not to forget for the operating profit now that's like uh, 519.3 compared to 510.6 again it has dropped the overall profit now so the part of the investigation would not be covered in part number two in this question so therefore you're not required to state any of the result or the outcome okay so i'm going to post it here right now okay so i'm going to post it here and of course i'll continue with the next point by stating that now at present most of the measures in our company okay are in absolute term all right now hence more information to be converted all right into relative measures are required so trying to come out with more uh, as we said the percentage and that seemed to be important class uh, we know that we need to compare whether it's higher lower because all these is just mainly for us to monitor the trend and it's just important okay so the next point we say that class now when we are measuring in terms of the performance so we say no operating profit per employee okay it's calculated here since we find that most of the time the general body of the employee okay we say are more concerned of course with sales rather than the profit okay now, so that's important uh, when we talk about rather than the cost, control and profit, yeah? So it's very much about how you make use of the uh, resources to generate the revenue for the business and that seemed to be more important in a way, okay? Fine. Now, shouldn't be a problem class if we continue then to move on uh, to the next part of our question. There you go. Now, so class... Now, somehow we understand the idea if, let's say, when we are talking about the APM as well as the SBL, okay? Now, so let us see what's the main differences between the two uh, when it comes to this part, okay? Now, I'm going to cut you some example first here. Uh, if, let's say, we are comparing the APM and the SBL, knowing that the third part is on the value chain approach, okay? Now... So since this is the first time, we are here looking into, I repeat, now we're here looking into the strategic models, strategic analysis models, and that's what we see. And therefore, we know class, in a way, it's important, okay, to have the definition to be stated. So make sure the definition has to be shown and of course, class, that's more on the value chain. That is to simplify the supply chain. And as what I've told you earlier, to simplify the supply chain, it's mainly to reduce the number of the suppliers. Now, of course, we talk about these as means of controlling the cost 
but it has pros and cons for every single decision. Okay, as what you get to see in this case, and that's mainly for number three. Okay, for your information. Okay, that is the one. Now, so of course, class. Now, looking into the scenario, we realize that from here. Okay, we realize that from here. I'm going to quote you the example, as we say. If you are seeing these in SPL versus the APM, okay, now it makes a difference. The definition must be there, which I believe for both the paper, yes, they are all required. But it's just a simple and brief definition, especially if we are talking about APM. Because somehow our main focus is very much about the application into the case can you see that now so of course uh, we look into its implication all right and that will include how you apply back into the case for example the pros and cons the use of this system to affect the business how how does it actually create the value so we will have to see this now class now we get to see that definition is here, but do you think a detailed explanation on every single element of this value chain will be required? The answer is not really. Okay. Now, so we say that in terms of the explanation, it goes straight directly to the application. Now, so when I say the application means you have to refer to the I mean, refer to the case and to see which part they're looking at. Now, I'll give an example. Like in this case, they're looking at to simplify the supply chain. And therefore, we realize that later, when we use this value chain, the part that we have to explain the most is on the supply chain part. And that's to do with the material. Say, for example, the purchase or the ordering of the material. And that's important. Okay, great. Now, of course, moving on class other than these, and what else do we have to show? For example, is there any possible impact that is on performance? All right, the performance management and management system. Okay, so that is somehow important for you to know because we get to know class that if it's anything that would affect the performance management system we're talking about with the current use of the value chain and does it actually affect our current set of the information system and that falls under the performance management part okay it's all about that execution but what about if it's management now, with management, we are talking about whether these will affect the objective, the long-term direction, or even the strategies of the company, all right, as what you get to see in this case. Now, that's once again very much to look into part number three for your information, okay? Now, so this is the one class Now we look into the scenario, okay? that is actually the one all right that is actually the one now so we mentioned that class now somehow from the very first all the way to the very third area okay now it's still important for you to actually go through the appendix and from the appendix then we will get to see more about the value chain now, knowing that class definition is required, we have just mentioned. If we say definition is required, we know this is somehow on the business integration two. So, with this business integration two class, we know that somehow it is important. All right, we know that somehow it is important for the business to create the value to the customers mainly can you see that 
okay so when we find that clause when i say to create the value to the customers what does it mean and that's when we need to look at the linkage from one activity to the next activity and which we get to see for example in the value chain analysis itself we will see these part on the primary activities for your information so this is the first part now what is this primary activities let's have a look we're looking at the inbound logistic very much about the ordering the procurement all right and of course the handling of the material at the first stage on the inbound logistic that it always starts from here and we know that plus from the very first stage where the value could be zero and along the way class from the inbound all the way to the final stage of service that's how you create 100 percent of the value to your customers okay now of course falling by the operation and when it comes to this operation it's very much about let's say manufacturing okay that's what you can see other than manufacturing for example in terms of the uh, let's say production conversion of the material to the output that's very much on the uh, part we say on the second part which is the operation area now of course other than the operation itself then it will be the third part on the outbound logistic now so when it comes to this outbound logistic don't forget we say that is after the production process that creates the highest level of the value to the customers so entering this part for example any form of shipping or distribution that you could actually see in this case can you see that all right and of course from the outbound finally to the marketing and sales here now, when we talk about this marketing and sales bearing in mind yeah, class, now we mentioned that it's again on the selection of these. Now, especially the channel of distribution seem to be very important. So when we talk about this channel of distribution, now we find that in a way class we know it's very much on what? how do you actually market your product you know nowadays it's getting more and more important to create the awareness understand in the market so therefore that is important now so from the very first stage and it's all the way to the service now when it comes to the service part what does it mean now that's very much on the after sales services now class don't ever think that you are here merely to sell them the product and to render the service and after that plus you are clean or hands clean here with, without any further responsibility but we find that that's not the way all right so the provision of the after sales services it does add value back to the customers at the end of the day okay now for example like any form of warranty repair advice consultation all these they are seen important here as well okay great now so once again with the primary area finally we'll be able to look into the supporting activities so in our class when it comes to these supporting activities somehow we say by creating the value to the customers it's important for you to get all these supporting activities in place such as the firm infrastructure looking into legal, finance, all right, in the company, HR management. So it's very much about the skills, the traits possessed by the employees. Number three, the technological development, very much on the information system, okay, as you can see, and at last on the procurement. Now, when you're going to see this procurement, that's more on, say, for example, the purchase, the ordering you know what i'm saying the purchase the ordering uh, of the materials inputs ingredients they are all here for your information okay now so if that's a scenario class for your information so right now my question is 
when you're looking at this question for APM, are you required actually to explain every single element in the value chain? The answer is no. And all you need to do is just include the definition and which one that will relate to the supply chain simplification. This one, this and this. And all these are actually relevant to the procurement of the material that relates back to the supplier. Okay, so bear in mind, class, it's always important for you to know, yeah? When you get to see questions like these, the students are actually not required, okay, uh, to remember every single element in there because it will then subsequently be provided in the appendix for your information, okay? So make, it makes a difference when it comes to the SPL as well as the APM. So do not put the hat of the SPL on the APM. That's important, okay? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming back to the third area when we are looking at trying to streamline supply chain, okay, using the value chain analysis, okay? Now, that is straightforward class, and let's have a look at definition first. So, we believe that class, this value chain, they basically divide, okay? Now, so when we say it divides the value activities of the business, now, of course, into different types of class, and we mentioned that, for example, where we say the primary and support Supporting activities and not to forget to examine we're trying to examine now the links between these all right as in what now it's mainly for us actually to see how all these build value to the customers or the business Okay, subsequently. Now, of course, class, uh, we just mentioned that from here that we are looking at the supply chain simplification. Now, it's to reduce the number of suppliers. And that's what you can see here, the number of suppliers and making the chain more efficient and that's the ultimate objective with the use of the value chain now class now it basically impacts on three types of the activity so we say impacts on the three types of activities as i mentioned just now for example number one in terms of the inbound logistics that's number one other than inbound logistics and number two we're looking at the second part on the procurement and on top of this procurement it's also possible class for us to look into the third one once again on technological development okay can you see that so we just stated here all right technological development okay so somehow it's important class by having these, okay? So we have to mention, what about the rest? That the rest, uh, we basically find that it will not be uh, affected, all right? Or probably some other if they go for outsource. Now, so we get to see class, what are the performance measures in here? For example, if you are looking into the case, all right? No, so we have just mentioned, class, we have just mentioned here. Now, the performance measures, I repeat, the performance measures of simplifying the supply chain will be as follows. Now, when I say to simplify the supply chain in terms of which part, class, uh, I believe there are two in the questions, like the number of suppliers. This will be relevant to us, plus the number of the product lines. Okay, so we take the number of the product 
lines supplied by each of the supplier and i would say this is important but all this somehow it's mainly on the assessing report can you see that okay as shown in the appendix just now where we have already gone through so uh nothing much i would say it, and somehow more or less the same okay now of course we can suggest some other now for example we can look into other measures now i think most importantly it's when we talk about the lead time so we say for example lead time or what we call that's time taken okay the time taken to source new or the raw products okay to source new products and this is what you get to see so any revenue and profit obtained from these measures will then be looked into okay now that is the one so that's under other measures okay other measures now of course class what about the last one here now they say the is which will involve now we say with those contact to the suppliers obtaining product details and prices and those liaising over delivery of these items and all these will then have to be accounted for now class so i believe that for example if you are going for jit that could probably help okay so we have other options to reduce for example consider the use of jit system because i think that helps to reduce okay uh, we mentioned that the number of supplies eventually to us or the business okay but of course if you want to go for jit and that's under the other part of our intensive revision course and especially towards the end when we are looking at the tqm okay uh, that's the area where we find that not all businesses could just start off and go straight to this jit and somehow it takes some time for them to get ready and especially the information system all right the availability of the information system is important whether can you go for that jit okay great now so this is all about part c or the third part of our question here for shivan and not to forget class we have to move on right now uh, looking into the fourth part which is big data now so class i think uh, somehow it's important for the students to look into the development of the big data in the first place okay and of course uh, we find that in the questions students are required to understand what are the three v's first or what we call as the big data first of all now looking into velocity varieties and volume now knowing that they are now in the retail or the clothing retail industry now somehow the shoppers information details their behavior all right uh, will be seen important for us to make decision and to lock in their loyalty so that's the reason why we say it's important somehow to look at the brand loyalty from time to time you see now so without wasting too much time class as i mentioned earlier in the question it's important for us to also assess the model answer and to see how it looks like okay so i'm going to show you this model answer right now of the examiner and it tells us in a way how to come out with the answer okay now so it's again uh we mentioned that it's pretty long here because uh we find that uh not all of them will be required okay so i'm going to show you this okay great now class i'm pretty sure that many of the students they do have this question in mind it's that stuffy do you think i have sufficient time for me to actually write such a long answer in the exam so it's just too worthy or lengthy in nature now class i would personally find that uh 
No, all right. It's not possible because in the first place, this is mainly for the reference of the students, or we say the self-study students, or even the retake students. Okay. Now, so once again, we look at the question first. Okay. Now we have to go through to say the development of the big data and any of the potential impact on Shivan's information system including the risks and challenges that it presents with the use of the big data. Okay, so let's see. Now, so we realize that class here on the potential impact of big data for performance management at Shivan. Okay, so let's see here. Now, big data refers to the very large amount of the data. Can you see that? So it has to be there. No, which are now available through the increased use of technology and can be used to develop predictive information about human customer and the supplier behavior. Can you see that? Okay, that is the case. Now, class, so the very important keywords we're looking at is to develop the predictive information. And what does it indicate in this case? Now, class, by the time if you see this predictive info, they're just telling us that indirectly, we have to be prepared that how customers are going to buy, all right? For example, uh, is it seasonal in nature? And are they willing actually to pay for the price that we charge? Okay, so it's very much on the human customer and the supplier behavior. That's the one. Now next. Now, there are three characteristics of the big data, and where now we have to see them one by one, okay? So, I'm going to highlight you just the keywords, okay, the first. Now, the large volume of data obtained, and obviously, class, the first paragraph is on the volume part. Now, this is best understood by considering the relevant information gathering system by Shivan. Now, class. Let's stop and pause for a while. When we are talking about the data collected, it can be from two different main sources. Number one, okay, which is from the physical store. Number two, from the web store or what we call as the web sales. So it says, now in stores, loyalty card being swipe, okay, now which is that the checkouts allow the details of all products purchased the time, amount, and the method of the payment being used. And therefore, this system would capture all the details required by the business. And we say, now what about if let's say on the website? On the website and on Shivan's social media pages, in addition to the data, which could be collected as for the stores, now every page visited and every product examined or commented upon would be recorded. So the information will require the system hardware to store and to retrieve it. Okay, class. Now, so from here, they're just telling us that we can actually try to collect different types of the data in the company. So it depends on whether it's a physical store or from the website. And of course, from this paragraph, we know the amount or the volume of the data to be collected it's a very large size one can you see that so we believe if you go for the web sales and with the use of the online system to capture the data that would be even better okay so that's the reason why nowadays most of the business has actually turned into online uh, retail all right and trying to cut down on the physical stores and i guess this could be part of the reasons Okay, it's time to understand the customers more or the market. Now, moving on. Now, the second part here where we are seeing on the second V, now it says, the velocity of the big data refers to short time scale for information developed to affect the decisions. And it shows to us that the information could be gathered in nearly real time. That's important. And this might be necessary in order to react quickly to the information about the customers. Can you see that? And that is the one. Now, who are considering a purchase, for example, 
it would be much less effective to tax a customer with the price comparison info after they have left the store. Okay, that is the one so far you know and you get to see in a way. Now, so everything is based on real time. Okay, and we know it's mainly to support the decision making of the business from time to time here. Okay, now so as a result, we say the software must be present to allow this kind of the data mining, as well as the predictive analysis required to perform these tasks for your information. Okay, now I think somehow the customer preference behavior. All these will have to be assessed, and probably perhaps in the past, uh, via as we said just now, via the swap of the loyalty card, is able for you to actually get the information on this, and subsequently, uh, we can actually use data mining to support the upcoming uh, marketing. All right, the marketing activities definitely. Now move on. Now they even say that big data is big due to the variety of the types. Now, finally, we get to see that the third V is on the variety of the types of info collected. And she then could be looking at the transaction data and browsing activities, as already mentioned, but also more unusual data types, such as like social media reactions, the text, not the photographs, and geographical information from the customer phones. Now, class, imagine if we go for the web sales, which we believe that more information will then be collected, okay, from this case. And we find that class, now this is the one we say it, because compared to physical store, sometimes it's hardly for you to get like uh, information on the customer's command, the feedback, you know, but if you go for web sales, then it's possible. More data, different types of the varieties are all there. Now, this data is both structured and unstructured, and these require different responses from the information recording and processing system. Okay, that's the one. So we're going to have the first, the second, as well as the third one, as you can see. Okay, now it's more about how you define the Vs, as well as how you bring in the case or the examples from the case into the answer. Okay, that's important. Now, so class, that means we know that with the use of the big data, that helps in marketing. Definitely, you're holding very large amount of the data not to forget, but let's see what would be the possible risks and challenges for these. Okay, let's have a look at this part then. Now, say for instance, class, we say, the systems which can record and process the volumes of the data being produced are expensive. Can you see that? So we're talking about to record and to process it, we find that that's very much on the hardware. Because by the time you go for the big data, uh, not to forget the investment costs are all to be taken into account. Now, both the hardware and the software, can you see that with the example? The costs are falling but as already noted now the volumes of the data available are rising and Shivan's competitors will be active in this area too so it'll be a process which requires a lot of spending in order to catch up with and to pass those competitors and then constant ongoing spending to maintain and advantageous position okay that plus especially when you are here to compete all right, with the players in the market, and you realize that somehow uh, the investment in the system will seem to be required. And that is still very much depending on the complexity of the business nature. Okay, now move on. Storage of personal information. So this is the second part of the risk, very much on data security. Okay, very much on these. Now about the customers is an active area of the new laws and regulations. And breaking these rules can be punished both in the legal sense but also in a reputational sense resulting in the loss business. So in particular, 
but say theft or loss of personal data can lead to civil legal action and bad public city. You see that? Okay, that is the one so far we are looking into class. So we know um, that still the risk that affect the overall business image and reputation. So this is something unavoidable. And what they have to do is to make sure they maintain um, good sound and tight control, especially for the data security. Okay, so this is something again unavoidable. Okay, the, the risk is always there. And it depends on how you perceive the risk. And if you find that you're pretty risk prudent and averse, where you can't really uh, accept the level of the risk, we will actually uh, advise the company not to go for such a system. Or probably what I have to do is trying to outsource it, if it's possible, or by maintaining a group of the experts in this area. Okay, so that's the second part of the problem. Now, what about if it's the third part? Now, they say, it tells us that the data obtained from qualitative sources and such as the social media can be imprecise or inaccurate. Yeah, that is very true. We're talking about the sources of the information obtained and we say lead to inaccurate conclusions and some data collected may be incorrect. And this is sometimes referred to as veracity problems. And what is this veracity problem for your information class? This is the fourth V. But this V is very much about the problem that we face. And therefore, we know fact check seems to be very important at this point of time. And the students say, now, Steffi, can you just quote, uh, I mean, like the example, what do you mean by this fact checks? F-A-C-T, fact. All right, C-H-E-C-K, check. Class, it's important for you to perform a check on the fact okay seeking the truth behind and before you place the trust on a particular fact or issue so as a result we know that's part of the solution for this and it say also in large volumes of the data some data may become out of date yes unavoidable so making sure that the monitor Filtration of the data will then seem important quickly, especially about the customer's precise location. And so the constant monitoring of the database will then be required to avoid this. Okay, now, so class, you can actually see that uh, in a way, it's always good for us to make use of the model answer as what I mentioned because with the use of the model answer, you can actually see how the examining team members came out with their uh, answers and the point. And that's where you can actually set the right expectation because this is something that they are looking at. Now, of course, you must also remember not just looking at the model answer. As I told you all during the normal class, we said it's good for you to make use of the technical articles written by ACCA. All right. For example, uh, it could be written by some freelancer or it, it's possibly to be seen as the article written by the examining team. OK, so what I have to do is that by the time you visit uh, www.accglobal.com and when you drag all the way down, you can see the past exam papers right so to pass your papers so from there you can see under the apm or the advanced performance management in which uh, just have to click on the technical articles and have a look at the articles and that's important okay so we find that all these has to be done like the commencement of a semester but not like a month before your exam now a month before your exam yes possibly that uh, for you it's possible for you to spend some time reading that but it's not advisable because uh, since you are having only like a month before the exam it's good for you somehow to make use of the past exam questions directly okay and make sure that you start from the latest one like let's say the March 2020 examinations right if it has been published online make use of it and see how examiner set the question okay great now so once again class this is the very first question that we have attempted. It's a very long question. And of course, I tend to spend 
longer time here, that's because plus uh, I mentioned that in a way uh, we have to see the exam technique and then on top of that we learn something really important here such as like the evaluation of report that MSTP seem to be one of the most important areas in the syllabus all right or your examination now so class now so from here we actually possible for us to look into a small part of the area that relates to information system that's to do with burns and scapens framework let's have a look at that now all right now class this is the part that we are seeing the burns and scapens framework as what uh, we have mentioned earlier now we know that somehow in the examination uh, whenever examiner is testing on the information system and in which uh, students are required to bring in different parts of the uh, syllabus to do with the information system now such as like uh, just now we we're talking about uh, the area to do with the big data and that's also a possibility where examiner may be testing on the ERPS. So whenever we talk about this ERPS, that refers to the Enterprise Resource Planning System, okay, on the ERPS here. Now, so that's also one of the key areas to be tested in the examination. So that's what uh, everyone will have to take note uh, if it's possible. And of course, not to forget class that Burns and Scapens framework, it's another one that we are seeing here. Now let's have a look at this Burns and Scapens framework. Here you go with this part. Okay, so let's see. Now when it comes to Burns and Scapens framework, by the way, we're looking at the changing role of the management accountant in the organization, all right, for your information. Now, so we say, Burns and Scapens have actually studied the changes in management accounting and noted how it has actually changed the focus from the financial control to the business support. And so the management accountant has become more of a generalist within the business providing an internal consulting service for the managers. Can you see that? So it's like they have actually named this new role as the hybrid accountant. Okay, class. So a small part that we have to cover here, which include, we know that the traditional role of the management accountant, it's mainly to gather, to collect the information, and subsequently they are required to analyze and finally to report. So it's very much about data collection, data analysis, and lastly, the reporting. But knowing that plus, now under the new technology, now with the cloud accounting, with the knowledge management, so we believe that in a way, the role of the management accountant has changed, okay? So let's see the second point. Now what I mentioned, traditionally, it was actually thought that the accountants needed to be independent from the operational managers in order to allow them to objectively judge and report their accounting information to the senior management. All right. So that was the original thought and perception, okay, about, again, about the traditional management accountant's role. But subsequently, Burns and Scapens also report that many accountants believed that there is an element of a current fashion in the need for a change. Now, class, the change is always there from time to time, whether you like it or not. Okay, that's important. And they say, Burns and Scapens state that there are three main forces for the change. Okay, so let's see. Now, so we find that what actually makes it change when we are here to see the forces for the change, such as like technology, management structure, and competition. And these are the three main areas we are seeing, okay? Now, so class, when I say technology, it's very much about the technological development, like what we're seeing just now in the value chain. Because we know that that's always the revolution, okay, of the technology. 
So any changes in this TD were then affecting the role of the management accountant. Okay, number two, it's the management structure we we'll talk about in the organization. And lastly, the level of the competition in the market. That plus, bearing in mind. Now, the level of the competition would definitely change the role of the management accountant, especially to change the focus of the company to be more strategic. Now, we know that plus, that competitors getting more and more in the market, and they could probably come out weed, as we say, you know, better quality of the products, or even with the ongoing uh, development of the products to do with innovation, uh, to do with uniqueness of the product. So as a result, we say that management accountants, subsequently, we have to look into their new role. Okay, class. Now, so let's have a look at the three main parts of these. And let's see, number one, as the change in the technology. Now, so it says, a significant change has occurred over the past 20 years in the quality and the quantity of the information technology. So they say in the past, the accountant was one of the few people in the organization who had access to the IT system. Yeah, that's very true. Now, I guess class somehow, the students are required to know about these. Traditionally, the management accountant may not fully possess the skills of IT. But you know, now a days what happened is that that's just too important. Okay, the IT skills is part of the requirement nowadays for the management accountant. And knowing that we are here, for example, to use the uh, integrated reporting. And then as we say, the uh, cloud computing, all right, then data analytics. So things are getting more and more complicated. So therefore, a certain level of the IT skills, all right, or competency were then seen to be required. And moving on, the information generated as the outputs from the IT systems were used to prepare highly sensitive financial reports to the management. Can you see that? So when they talk about these highly sensitive financial reports, then we know all these are actually to protect the security of the data by the business in a way. Okay, now next. Now we even say that the data input was strictly controlled. Can you see that? So class, now uh, once again, I believe they have to work along with or work alongside with the uh, in-house IT experts, if that's possible, because somehow we know this will affect them. And moving on. Now, now, however, the management information system allowed the users across the organization to input the data and to run the reports giving the type of the analysis once only provided by the management accountant. So the management accountant now just act as the, the another user of the system. Okay. Now let's have a look at these then, a small part of that, that you could probably see in the examination. The question is telling you that the current information system of the company is of all weaknesses and appears to be unreliable or unstable. So we can actually see a lot of examples like that. Now, so in this case, we know we have to go for a solution with the use of ERPS. So we're going to have one of our questions to be covered in this IRC. And that's our last question, which is question 12 by the name of Ludwig. And that's a question on the ERPS. Now we'll say with the use of the enterprise resource planning system as the unified corporate database, I repeat, as the unified corporate database. Now we know that somehow all these year class uh, will then be required to input both the internal information and the external information. So that's actually a part of the integration. Now, so what is this internal information? For example, when we are talking about warehousing, 
production, finance of the business, and what about the external? Now, the external info is very much about the external stakeholders, such as like customers, suppliers, competitors. So if it's under the customer part, and that's where they will bring in the CRM or the customer relationship management. All right. So that's always what you get to see. And on top of that class, if it's the SCM or the supply chain management, no, it is there. So as a result, there may be the communication between the customers with the suppliers, as you can see most of the time. And class, how in the first place? That's what we want to know. Class, now this is very much uh, through the intranet between the, uh, we say the extranet between the supplier as well as the customers that they can actually uh, have their communication, right? And even if let's say for those virtual organizations such as like Amazon, okay, plus requires very much on this ERPS that it produce the information real time, reliable, and then uh, they, they provide the protection of the confidential data. So that's the reason why we say that with all this coming out, the management accountant roles has changed. Okay, great. Now, number two. Now, what makes a change here once again, it's because of the changes in management structure. All right, as you can see. Okay, let's have a look. Now, for example, the responsibility for budgeting has often moved from the head office to the operational management. Can you see that? Plus, so that's the reason why somehow when we talk about this uh, management structure, it's very much to do with flattening the reporting system. Okay, so it's very much on the employee empowerment. So this is one of the key features that we'll see in the later part of our revision class, especially when we are looking at what? Especially when we are looking at Kaizen costing, all right, the BPR, you know, so it's all about employee empowerment. And on top of that class is about decentralization. Now, so when you get to see this decentralization, again, class is on. Now, giving the autonomy, delegating the responsibility or the power now to the employees. You know what I'm saying? So let them make the decision since they know well about the operation. So we find that when there's a change in the management structure, so they can react to the market changes more quickly as compared to the strategic level. So that is number two. Now, of course, number three class by Burns and Scapens there, we find that that's because when there's change in the competitive environment that has caused uh, all these impact one by one. So it says, now over the last 20 years, there has been a move in the organizations to a more strategic focus with the need for competitive advantage being emphasized. And as a result, the traditional accountant's focus on the final profit figure has been seen as short term and this has led the organizations to focus on a range of measures to try to capture the longer trends in their performance. Okay, class. Now, so we just mentioned that uh, if, let's say, looking into the situation that there's a change in the uh, competitive environment and what's going to be happen, it's don't just looking at financial results anymore because that's so much to do with the profit. It's just too short term when we're looking at financial. And instead, what we should do is to focus more on the non-financial one. And that is the reason why in this set of the IRC uh, course itself, and even the materials, we, we get to see a lot of questions to do with the, uh, uh, for example, a balance scorecard because we know we're trying to meet the needs of the customers by measuring the operational problem or on top of that we can even see uh, how you make use of the performance pyramid because that's to link all the operational objective with the corporate vision so that means by considering 
okay, by considering the non-financial performance in a way could help us to remain more competitive in the market. All right, that's what you get to see in this case. Okay, now to class, once again, just now we have covered big data in the question. If you see that, making sure definition must be there. And then on top of that class with the examples of the three Vs provided. So we have looked into that already. Then number two class, remember, if they are testing on some other parts of the IT, Burns and Skippens framework is one of the areas that came out in the examination. So therefore, class, uh, once again, the role of the management accountant has changed mainly due to the following three forces of the change. Number one, the change in technology. Number two, the change in management structure. And number three, when we're looking at the competitive environment, right? As you can see in this case for your information. Okay, now, so class, so it shouldn't be a problem so far here uh, for us actually to look into the next question since we have already covered, okay, most of the areas in question one. So guess what? Uh, coming up, we have more questions from section A and we get to start to see the area on performance measurement on both financial and non-financial, right? So that's the end for this video and thank you for watching. I shall see you in the next video. All right. Thank you very much.